Today I would like to talk to you about some changes in the 3D high speed tool pass within Mastercam 2018. Today's webinar is going to be on variable stock amounts using 3D high speed tool pass. My name is Chris Lang. I'm a CAD CAM application engineer for in house solutions. This webinar will cover the brand new features in Mastercam 2018 that will allow you to leave variable stock amounts on different faces as you do 3D machining. So to start, I'm going to demonstrate functionality that matches Mastercam 2017 and show you the difference in the workflow within Mastercam 2018. After that, I will show you a number of new enhancements in Mastercam 2018 as far as the functionality goes. So the first thing we're going to do is put a tool path on this part within Mastercam 2018 just like you could do in Mastercam 2017 or any previous version. Just for reference, I will go to my Home tab and click on the Statistics button. And here we can see on the screen currently there are four lines and one solid. Now let's go to the Toolpath tab and pick a raster toolpath. Right away you will notice a different workflow from any previous version of Mastercam. It takes us to this new model geometry page. You will notice it is right underneath the toolpath type page. I've already picked the toolpath type, right? So we are going to take you to the second page, which is the model geometry. It didn't pop up in that small dialog box that would request drive, check surfaces, and containments. If I go to the toolpath type page, you will notice it has changed. There's my finished raster, which is what I established when I picked the toolpath, and you will notice there is nothing else on this page because it has been moved into the model geometry page and toolpath control page. It's been moved, modified, and improved. So when you pick a toolpath type, you satisfy this page. So immediately, Mastercam takes you to the model geometry page. There's no intermediate dialog or interface. There's one simple interface to learn. Now this page has changed quite a bit. The terminology has been changed to match the 2D high-speed machining, which is referred to as machining region and avoidance regions. When you chain your geometry to create a dynamic toolpath. So now on the mill 3D side, we've renamed the drive and check surfaces to machining geometry and avoidance geometry. So that way there's an easier path forward to transition from mill 2D to mill 3D. Now the terminology is the same and it means the same. The machining region is a chain you select to machine in 2D. Machining geometry is model geometry, surface, solid, or mesh that you machine in 3D. Avoidance regions are avoided in 2D. Avoidance geometry is surface, solid, or mesh data that you want to avoid in mill 3D. So we have two grids here that allow you to select your machining data or your avoidance data. We have what we refer to as a machining group or row. It is selected right now and by default named machining. So right now I'm going to select data for that group. Selection has changed as well for Mastercam 2018. Remember I said I had a solid on the screen? So in my selection bar at the top of the screen, you will notice there is no option for solid selection. Immediately, we are in solid face selection. So if we had a surface on the screen, we could immediately pick surfaces and solid faces and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference in the whole experience. We can also window select solid faces. And if I wanted to select the whole body, I can triple click on the body. So back to putting a toolpath on the part. I'm going to clear the selection and then triple click on the body to select all the faces and then pick end selection. Now we can see we have 91 entities, which are faces. And let's say I want to leave 30,000 stock. I will double click on wall stock here and enter 30,000 and double click on floor stock and enter 30,000. I can double click in the name column and change the name if I want. But right now I'm okay with that name. I have the whole model selected, so I'm going to accept this and let it process the toolpath. And there's this raster toolpath quickly put on this part. I can immediately see the tool rolls the edge of the part. And I didn't want this to happen. I wanted to use this blue machining boundary. So I'm going to go back into the parameters. 
And now on the third page down, toolpath control is where you define your containment boundary, approximate start point, curves, and points. All these things we used to select on the toolpath type page. And some of those items you had settings that you had to navigate through other pages to finish defining. So you would pick your boundary and then you'd have to go to another page to establish this type of functionality shown here. But now it's all on one page. So I will grab my boundary. I will establish my tooltip and compensate to center. And then we move along in a nice orderly fashion. I will also select a different tool for this part. I'm gonna pick a quarter inch ball nose tool here. Now in Mastercam 2018, you pick your machining geometry, establish your stock to leave, then pick your boundary and establish the behavior or anything else you need that supports this toolpath. Then move along, grab your tool and dive into the parameters that actually control the toolpath. The new layout is meant to be more logical and make your day-to-day -day programming easier and smoother. So I'm gonna generate this toolpath now and there it is respecting my boundary. Now, I don't like the machining direction, so I'm gonna go back into the parameters and change the machining angle to 90 degrees. And we'll regenerate this. So we can still go into the parameters and make changes to the toolpath as I've demonstrated here. Or we can do it by selecting the plus next to geometry. If I wanna change the containment boundary as an example, I can click on it and it brings me to the chain manager. So I can delete this chain or add another chain. And if I pick geometry, it will bring me to the model geometry page. So this is another easy way to get back into the beginning of the toolpath parameters. There is no jumping around trying to find parameters to affect the toolpaths. Everything is right where you would expect things to be on these two simple pages. So that is pretty much showing you a one-to-one -one workflow from any previous version of Mastercam to Mastercam 2018 in terms of putting a toolpath on this particular part. All right, so let's talk about some new functionality added to Mastercam 2018 beyond just the workflow experience. So I'm gonna create a new raster toolpath. And right away you'll notice the solid color appears to be a white color. Remember, the part was colored gray, right? My remaining color is enabled and set to white. You can select whatever color you want to use for this. So if I disable this option, you will see the solid color set back to the color used to create the solid. If I enable it, it shows the solid as a white color. The remainder represents all the surfaces, solids, or mesh data on the screen that is currently not selected. So if I were to pick some machining geometry and pick a few faces here, you will notice those faces turn green. They turn green because that's the color assigned to this row. And you can see the remaining data on the screen is white. At a quick glance, this tells me if I see white color that the geometry isn't gonna be taken into account for this toolpath, meaning my tool is free to roll over the edge and simply go into this white geometry. Now, if I don't wanna see the green and white colors, you can simply just navigate off the page and Mastercam will show the solid model normal colors. But when you are on the model geometry page, Mastercam will color the model for you so it is meaningful. If I wanted to add some more data, I would simply select the row and hit the select button again and continue on picking faces. So let's go and pick some more faces. So I'm gonna go into the top view here and I'm gonna window select these faces. Now I wanna leave some material on these faces. So let's say let's leave 100 thou on these faces. And I'll go to my toolpath control page, select my containment, set these parameters, and then I'll go and make sure I have my quarter inch ball nose tool picked. And now let's generate this toolpath. So if we look at this toolpath, you can see the tool rolls over the edge right through the remaining or white faces or faces we didn't select. This happens because Mastercam has no idea that that data is there because we have not selected it. So this is what the remainder helps you with. Now I wanna leave zero stock on these runoff edges. 
but I only want to create a single toolpath. I want to have zero stock here, 100,000 stock here, and then back to zero stock here. So new for Mastercam 2018, we can create multiple collections of machining geometry and they can have different stock to leave values. This works for machining geometry and avoidance geometry. So I will create a new row here and I will call that row or group runoff. Then I will select that row and pick the geometry I want to associate with that group. Notice I'm immediately in face selection mode and can start picking these faces. I don't need to go back up here and activate solid selection and then tell it I want to pick faces. I can just start clicking and selecting the faces. The gray color is close to my model color, so I'm going to pick a different color. And now at a quick glance, I can see I'm leaving 100,000 stock to leave on the green faces and zero stock to leave on these orange faces. And it looks like all the white colored faces are not in play. So let's process this toolpath and see what we get. I want you to notice this little bump here. This is where the tool actually moves up to leave 100 thou on those green surfaces. Maybe to illustrate this a little better, let's leave negative 10 thou on the orange faces or runoff. For certain parts like a mold, this might be a common process where you machine the green faces to leave zero stock and then the runoff you machine deeper for venting. And now you can do this all within one toolpath. So let's process this toolpath and then backplot it and take a look at it. Now we can't really see the negative stock to leave here because backplot is just showing us the toolpath endpoints. So let's go into the backplot options here, turn on interpolate, and have the step increments set to 50 thou. So now as we backplot our tool along, you can see right there the tool is cutting into this part, but as it comes across to the machining surfaces here, it moves up and it moves away from those surfaces. So this is new to Mastercam 2018. You can now assign these different groups, name them, and have different stock to leave values with different data in them, and create a single toolpath with these different stock to leave values on your part. Let's create a different group and call this group test. I don't like the color, so let's pick a different color. Now, I want to pick this face here. This face is currently in our runoff group. And let's say I want to put it in this test group. Take note, right now there are 16 faces in the runoff group. There isn't a move function here. So if we want it in our test group, we simply highlight this group and pick that face. Now we have 15 faces in the runoff group and one in the test group. If we want to put that face back in the runoff group, we select the runoff group and pick that face. So now once again, we have 16 faces in the runoff group and zero in the test group. So you can see it's very easy to move things around. Just select them and they move. Now on the other side here is the avoidance grid. It's the same explanation. So if I didn't want to machine something with this toolpath and I wanted to avoid a particular feature on a part, I can choose to avoid it. And we can give different stock to leave values to stay away from it. I could pick a wall on a part and say stay away a few thousandths of an inch, or pick some fixture items and say stay away a quarter of an inch. If you want to move certain items from one grid to another grid, you can right click and click cut entities, and then paste them from one side to the other. We can unselect certain entities in a group, 
and you can right click and delete groups. If we want to reset stock values, you can do that down here by selecting this button. This would be useful if you copied a toolpath and wanted to reset the stock to leave amounts. You can create many groups, rename them, and we can shift, click, and select those groups, and then delete them if we want. As you can see, there's a lot of flexibility with these new features in Mastercam, and this should hopefully make your job easier when applying your toolpaths. If you have any questions about this webinar or want to see any other webinars, please feel free to contact us at info at inhousesolutions.com. Also, if you want to know what other webinars are up and coming, please subscribe to our newsletter at www.inhousesolutions.com forward slash subscribe. Thank you for taking part in this webinar. This will conclude the variable stock webinar.